booktube my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel today I'm coming to you with the weekly reads for May the 26th of 2018 um, in my weekly reads videos I talk about all the books that I have read this week in the last week and um, I tell you what books I am currently reading so I'm actually gonna start this video off a little differently than I normally do um, I don't really talk a lot about personal stuff going on, um, you know, how my weekend's going or what I'm doing. Um, you know, in a vlog, I will kind of talk about a little bit more stuff, but not really. Um, but if you guys will indulge me, I would like to start off by, by talking about something that happened last weekend. Um, if you're not interested in hearing anything personal, you know, whatever, you just want to get onto the books, I have the timestamps in the down bar below. Please feel free to jump ahead to the books. That's absolutely fine and I totally understand. Um, sadly, um, last Sunday morning, my grandmother passed away. Um, she was 92 years old and um, healthy as far as we all knew. Um, uh, from what my aunt told me later on after the fact, she, she hadn't been feeling the greatest for a couple weeks leading up to um, last Sunday. And, um, she woke up, um, sorry, I've got an itch. She woke up early Sunday morning and um, she was living at home with my aunt. Um, she gardened every day, um, or the days that she could. Um, she'd been out in the garden quite a bit um, leading up to, um, and she still cooked. She still kind of kept up and did a little bit of cleaning. Um, you know, you wouldn't have known. She was more active than, more, than most 30 year olds that I know, you know what I mean? Um, she, um, she woke up and she, she was having chest pains and, um, they got her to the hospital and within a, a half an hour to an hour, she was gone. Um, I, I, I still can't believe it. <laughs> um, I saw her every single week for my entire life. Um, I said I wasn't going to do this. I'm sorry. Um. Yeah, every literally every single week we did Sunday dinner over at Grandma's house. She was the matriarch of the family. Um, she um, loved her family more than anything else in the world. Um, nothing was more important to her than having everybody together. And, you know, you could have given her a, a trillion dollars and she wouldn't have taken that over her family for anything in the world. Um, she was amazing and, um, I am going to miss her a lot. Um, I said to my aunt, I went up to my aunt's house yesterday cause it was, she, like I said, she lived with my aunt and, um, I was there yesterday and I said to aunt Sandy, I said, it's, it's like, she's just sleeping. Like she's not like, I didn't see her obviously sitting in the living room. And I said, and you know, still in my brain, she's just upstairs taking a nap. You know, she's still here. She's just not right here. And, um, unfortunately I didn't get to the hospital in time. Um, I, my phone, the ringer was off and it was like six, seven o'clock in the morning on Sunday. I, I didn't get the call. My brother got to see her. Um, but it was after she had passed. And I guess maybe that's why I'm having a, a harder time with it. Um, with understanding, you know, what happened or the fact that she, I mean, I understand, you know, don't get me wrong, but to, to, to accept it and it's going to take some time. Um, holidays are going to be really, really different. Um, without her being around, um, she, um, you know, she still loved Christmas. She loved birthdays so much. They were like her favorite thing. Um, you know, making sure the whole family was together. And I'm just forever thankful that um, the weekend before she passed, of course, was Mother's Day. And we were all over at her place and I have pictures and she's just in her element. All of her grandchildren were there. Her great grandchildren were there. Her children were all there, you know. Um, it was it was really, really special to have that being um, one of the last memories that I have of her. Um, and you know what, in retrospect, it's probably better I didn't see her um, in the hospital because I don't want to remember her that way. Does that make sense? Um, uh, but I actually saw her on the Friday before she died. Um, I went over to my aunt's house for a quick visit, a little stopover on my way home from work, and Grandma was sitting on the couch, knitting away on a pair of slippers and watching her Toronto Blue Jays. So that's the last memory I have of her. But if you'll just, again, indulge me, I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to go on like this. I know this is not why you guys are here, but I do appreciate it. But I wanted to show a picture of the young lady because um, she was awesome. And um, 
that's her. Um, this is one of the only pictures we have where she's by herself in the photo. <laughs> Every other picture we were looking at, she had one of us grandchildren, or she had one of my brother's kids, one of her great-grandkids, her own children. I think there are very few pictures that exist of her by herself. <laughs> so that should tell you something. She was always surrounded by people. Um, the family came over from Poland in 1929. Um, she was the youngest. She was only two um, when they immigrated over. Um, they lived out west in Alberta um, in literally a sod house with dirt floors and dirt walls. I don't know for how long, but that was their original homestead. Um, so they were some of the original pioneers out west. Um, I know it doesn't seem that long ago when you think about it. Um, you know, the late 1920s, it was the start of the Depression. Um, but yeah, they lived out there, and then when she was in her, I think, late teens, her and her sister came to Ontario. Um, she worked odd jobs. Um, she was always, uh, she, she actually used to pick tobacco leaves. Um, I don't know if that was out, I think that was out west, I don't think that was here. Um, she met my grandfather, um, and they married, um, I don't remember the year that they got married. I think it was 1947 because my uncle was born in 1948. So it was 1947, um, they got married. Um, my uncle was born, like I said, in 47, uh, 48. My uncle was born in 48, and my dad was born in 49. And then he, they have two younger sisters, um, just a few years apart. So like within a five or six year span, she had four children. Um, her first husband, my dad's dad, passed away. Um, it would be 50 years ago this, this summer, my aunt was talking to me about it. And, um, 68, I guess it would have been 19, it would have been 1968, I think, if I'm doing my math correctly. I don't think it was, it wasn't 19, no, it was 1968, because my dad was not quite 20 yet when his father passed away. And um, about five or six years later, she married the man that I knew as my grandfather, um, her second husband. And, um, then, um, you know, us grandchildren came along and, you know, uh, I mean, I know I condensed her life into something very small or, or very short, but it was, it was long and it was good. Um, she suffered breast cancer twice and beat it both times. Um, the first time was about 20 years ago. Um, and then this time actually more recently, which I don't know whether this contributed to her death, um, or not, um, whether, you know, it was just too much on her heart. Um, she died of a heart attack, uh, two heart attacks, actually, um, back to back, essentially, in the hospital. Um, but the second time was just this fall, it came back, and she had a full, like, she had a mastectomy, and, um, as far as we knew, she was okay. They decided not to do any other treatments, like chemo or anything like that, because it was really hard on her the first time, and that was 20 years ago. So you can imagine what that would do to a 90-year-old. Um, you know, and they say it's more just preventative to keep it from coming back. But at 92, it was kind of like, you know, so, um, so yeah, so she loved the cottage. They had, my grandparents had a cottage up in Peterborough uh, on Rice Lake. If anybody's familiar with the Kawartha area of Ontario, um, we spent summers there. We spent, um, week, weeks there. You know, my brother and I, when they first got the cottage, it didn't even have indoor plumbing. <laughs> I remember the first time my mom brought us up because she didn't know that and we drove up to the cottage and and uh, and mom dropped us off or we got out my mom was gonna stay the weekend too I think and uh, when my grandfather said something about no there we only had an outhouse my mom was like see you kids have a great time and she took off back to the city <laughs> um, they spent winters for about five years in Florida they had a trailer in Fort Myers um, and uh, they used to bring us grandkids down for spring break um, so we could come and see them. I loved going to Florida. I thought it was so much fun because I got them all to, because they did it. Um, they brought us each down separately. Um, so it was kind of nice for them. It wasn't as stressful for them. And it was nice for us. Like my cousin's an only child. There's only three grandchildren, me, my brother, and my cousin. And, um, you know, uh, it was kind of nice to get a break from my brother for a week and to kind of have my grandparents all to myself. Um, so yeah, so uh, anyway, guys, this went on far longer than I anticipated it. Um, I do appreciate you sitting here and listening to me, um, get all teary eyed, but, um, it, it's, it, it's a big part of my life. And, you know, last week I bulk filmed. 
So, you know, those other videos went up during the week, and but obviously I didn't know at the time of me filming, right? So, um, but anyway, yes. So thank you again very, very much for letting me indulge, and let's get on to the books, you guys. Okay, so the first book that I finished this week was The Chocolate Touch by Melissa McClone. Um, it is a contemporary romance novel. It is book number eight in the Love at the Chocolate Shop series. Um, it was published in 2017 by Tool Publishing has an average rating on Goodreads of 4.27 stars, and I gave it three and a half stars. I got two challenges completed out of this one. Um, the Triple RC Monthly Challenge for May, the M is for May, um, so I went with the author's name that starts with the letter M. And for my Stacking the Series Challenge, this was my 20th out of 45th book for that challenge, so that's great too. This one was a cute story. Um, it, it wasn't my favorite in the series, but I did enjoy it. Um, it is uh, the story of Chantel and York, and Chantel is a the heiress to a chocolate empire, um, but she just recently found this out. Um, I guess her mother, for whatever reason, was kind of disowned by the family, and then her parents died, and her uncle kind of got in touch with her, uh, or she got found them or something. I can't remember. Sorry, guys. It's been a heck of a week, I'm sure you can imagine. Um, and uh, she, um, she, to kind of earn her way into the company, she has to learn everything she can about chocolate. So she's traveling the country and she's finding these small little chocolate shops that have certain recipes and she's going to try and buy these recipes off the proprietors of these shops so that the chocolate empire that she's part of um, can add them to their repertoire and, um, you know, kind of stay current, if you will. Um, and she, of course, falls for um, a gentleman by the name of York and he is the brother to Dakota and Nevada, who you met in earlier stories. And... Um, both of them are only in town like they don't neither one of them actually lives in town he's only there as kind of he's between jobs like he's got another job he's going to but he's got like a month or so off so he's in town kind of helping out and uh, with his sisters and things like that or helping his sisters and she's of course here for this whole chocolate thing so the story kind of goes from there um again really really cute these are really sweet stories very clean stories if you like that um you know you don't like a lot of spice in your romance these are absolutely perfect and I highly recommend them. Um, the next book that I finished, I actually finished um, The Chocolate Touch on Saturday, and then I finished um, this book, Winter Garden by Kristen Higgins, Kristen Higgins, Kristen Hannah, excuse me, on Sunday. Not the best book to be reading on Sunday or listening to on Sunday. Um, Sunday was kind of, you know, over with family and doing things like that, you know. Um, and unfortunately, this book was extremely sad on a good day. Um, after the day that I had had, I sobbed like a baby at this book. Um, so like I said, it is Winter Garden by Kristen Hanna. It is a historical fiction novel. It was narrated on audio by Susan Erickson. It was published in 2010 by St. Martin's Press. Has an average rating of 4.15 stars. I gave it five stars. This is a favorite book of mine. This is the second time I've now read it. I could not recommend this book enough. Um, for my challenge, I got task number 18 for the What to Read in 2018, which was list your TBR by 40 books per page and sort from A to Z, and then you pick a book off that list. So this one fit. Um, I wanted to reread re this one for a little while now, so I'm glad I got the chance to do so. Um, I can't even, this story is, is complex, and I don't want to get too much into it because I kind of, I went into it the first time I read it blind. And, like, I kind of understood the premise. I got what was called the elevator pitch, I guess you would say. Whereas this is a story about two grown women um, who grew up with a very distant mother. Um, she was not the caring, nurturing kind of mother that, you know, most people hope for. Um, they were not neglected, but they just weren't felt like they were loved, if that makes sense. They got that from their father. And then at the very beginning of the story, um, actually, this is a story, and I should preference this by saying this. You need to get through the first 100 pages of this book. I know you, people hate hearing that, but it's true. Once you get fat past like the first 100 pages, the story picks up so much. But they're building the background. You really need that background to really appreciate the rest of this story. So anyway, their father's the one who shows them all the affection and things like this. So these are like the, the older sisters in her f early 40s and the younger sisters, you know, late 30s. And their father passes away. Um, that's not a spoiler alert, that's on the back of the book. Um, and growing up, their mother used to tell them this fairy tale. Um, their mother's from Russia, and the father urges the mother to tell them the whole story. 
And then it goes back in time to World War II to St. Petersburg, Leningrad, um, the siege. Uh, I think that's, is it the siege at Leningrad? I think so. Again, I'm a little fuzzy, um, even though I just finished this book. But again, my brain was in not a great place. My emotions were not in a great place. Let's put it that way. Um, and it is utterly heartbreaking. Absolutely heartbreaking. Um, I don't want to get any more into it than that. If you like historical fiction, if you like Kristen Hanna, this is one of her older works. Please do yourself a favor and pick it up. You will not regret it. It was great on audio. The narration, um, Susan Erickson did a brilliant job because, um, uh, of course, the girls are American. They, they live, uh, the story, um, you know, the modern day parts of it, if you will, take place in Washington State, in the States. So they have, of course, American accents. The mother is Russian. And when she's telling the story, she has a brilliant Russian accent. And the boyfriend of one of, of the younger sister is, I believe, Irish. And she does a great Irish accent as well. So highly enjoyable, highly recommend it. Please read this book. Um, the next one that I finished was At Wolf Ranch by Jennifer Ryan. This was a contemporary romance slash suspense novel. Um, it was book number one in the Montana Man, Montana Men series, excuse me. It was narrated on audio by Colleen Marlowe, published in 2015 by Avon. Um, it has an average rating of 4.07 stars on Goodreads. I gave it three and a half stars. Um, two challenges for this one. The first one was the Pass the Parcel for round, uh, round 10, week number 11. This was my final one for Pass the Parcel, which is sad because I really do like that challenge. Um, and you had to read a book off of um, a certain list, and the list was Love on the Range. So books that took place, place at ranges or ranches or cowboys, things like that. And the second one was for the Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs Quarterly Challenge. I got Blue Topaz, which is read a book with a light blue cover or a character that has to face their fears. This qualifies for both, in my opinion. So this one wasn't a book I had planned on. Um, I needed a book for this challenge. It was on the list. It, it looked like something that I was really going to enjoy that I needed. I needed that fluffy contemporary romance. I did not realize going into it, because I didn't read what it was about, um, that it was a suspense novel. So the entire premise of the story is about a woman named Ella. Ella? Yes, Ella. And um, she is the daughter of a multi-million dollar Fortune 500 company. And at the very beginning of the book, like I'm talking like first chapter, her, uh, her not identical twin, her fraternal twin sister, uh, Leela, is killed. And um, the, hus or the husband, her, their uncle has been um, taking money from the company and doing some very bad things and trying to sell property out from under their noses. Um, when they turn 25, which is in a few weeks after the beginning of this book, or a month or so after the begin after this book starts, they were to inherit the entire company. And his plan was to pretty much kill both of them and take over the company. Their parents passed when they were young girls. And um, so everything kind of fell to them. So the story goes from there. She ends up back at this place called Wolf Ranch in Montana. Um, which her family owned and she meets Wyatt and Wyatt bought her family's ranch although he didn't know that it wasn't a legal sale he wasn't the uncle wasn't legally able to sell it because the girls were still alive um, so the story goes from there and it was really really good I had a few issues with it um, it there were a lot of sexy times in this book um, which under normal circumstances don't bother me in the least they were well done my issue was the fact that her sister had literally only been gone less than a week and she was already sleeping with some guy she just met. I don't know. The time period for me was a little... Again, everybody grieves in a different way <laughs> and I get that. But it just didn't feel right to me. Um, there's a scene where she's in the funeral home with her sister's body and she's having a very heartfelt moment, you know, saying goodbye. And then it flashes to his perspective and he's thinking about how good looking she is not the dead girl the girl who's alive but still it's like there's a time and a place dude this is neither so there were a few things that kind of bothered me a little bit but all in all it was a good story it was really action-packed um you know you know right from the beginning who the bad guy is so there's no suspense on that part of it but it's how they're going to catch him kind of idea um and yeah it was really really good um you know three and a half stars is more than an average good rating from me um i will be continuing on with the series for sure and the last book that I finished this week was The Doctor's Recovery by Carrie uh, Lynn Webb. This is a contemporary romance novel. It is Harlequin Heartwarming number two, uh, 234. It was published in 2018 by Harlequin. It was literally just published this month. It is a brand new release. Um, it has an average rating of 4.13 stars on Goodreads. I gave this one four stars. I really like this book, you guys. 
Um, this was for my monthly challenge for May, uh, number seven, which was May 8th, World Red Cross Day, which was to read a book about a doctor um, or somebody in the medical field or something that takes place in a hospital. Um, this is the story of Mia and Wyatt. And at the beginning of the book, Mia is um, pulled from the ocean. She is a documentary filmmaker. And I guess something happened when she was under the water and she almost died. She ends up in Wyatt's hospital. Wyatt is the ER doctor, is, a, is an ER doctor. This book takes place in San Francisco. And the two of them do have a slight history. They met in Africa. He was working like with a Doctors Without Borders kind of idea. And she was there doing a documentary film when one of the people on her crew got hurt. And she went to the village and found him and he helped. And they kind of met and got talking and figured, you know, a relationship was not a good idea considering both of them travel all over all the time and things like that. So, yeah, um, but now they've met back up again a couple of years later. So it's not just their story, which is what I think I really loved about this book. The romance part of it actually came second. This was a very, very slow burn romance. Um, the two of them actually cannot stand to even be in the same room as each other at the very beginning. Um, he has a mother who is has had a hip replacement and she suffers from seizures and she's fighting to go home to be able to take care of herself and he's fighting to let her do that because he thinks she needs the help and maybe she needs to go into a home you know he's got a backstory with his brother her father passed away while filming these documentaries and you know she she wants to follow in his footsteps and do what makes him happy you know her father asked her to pretty much you know finish this for me and you know she's pretty much putting her life in danger so, you know, it's a whole lot of story. These are long books. I know most people think about Harlequin novels and they think they're, oh, they're right around 200 pages, quick, easy read. This one came in at like almost 370 pages. So it was a good, long, enjoyable book. Also completely clean. Other than um, a few kisses, like that's pretty much as spicy as it got. And, you know, it was a really, really nice change of pace. Um, I recommend this, uh, this line, the Harlequin heartwarming line. If you like romance that's on the sweet side, uh, much like you love at the Chocolate Shop series, um, highly enjoyable and I absolutely recommend it. So what am I currently reading? Um, reading has been, I mean, I finished those books off, but anything new, I, I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to get everything finished by Thursday because Thursday's the 31st. I want to get all these books done so I meet all my challenges for the month of May. But the book that I'm currently listening to on audio is The Friends We Keep by Susan Mallory. This is book number two in the Mischief Bay series. Um, and this is being narrated on audio by Tanya Ebby. Um, I am really, really enjoying this book. It is labeled as a romance, but it is so much more a chiclet than a romance. Um, it's about three friends. This is the second book, as I said, in the Mischief Bay series. So one of the characters is kind of crossing over from that book. Her story finished in Mischief Bay, in the first book, The Girls of Mischief Bay. But um, it's now you're getting kind of like part two of her story, if you will. Um, because she did, it didn't end with her meeting somebody. It didn't end. What I love is that these don't all end with a romance. Um, all of their the characters' individual stories. So, like I said, it's three separate characters. One is Nicole, who's the one who is a kind of carryover from the last book. And um, I don't want to give too much away on her story, but it's it's kind of her. How can I say this? Her. Um, it's just a story about her. Kind of. Um, I don't want to say, so I'm not going to say because I don't want to spoil it. The other two girls are a little different. Um, one is Gabby, and she is the mother of twin girls, and she's married to this man named Andrew. Andrew has a daughter from a first marriage who's 15, and it's the story of how they're dealing with something that has happened to the 15-year-old. And the last story is about Haley, and she is, um, I'd say, mid-30s, and she is having trouble. She's not having trouble conceiving. She can get pregnant. She can't carry pregnancy to term. She's had five miscarriages and pretty much her, her doctor has told her, if you even get pregnant again, it will kill you. And she cannot come to grips with that. For her own reasons, which are explained in the book, and I don't want to give them away, she, she feels this compulsive need to have a baby, um, her own baby, and not adopt a baby. Um, I highly recommend this story. It is so, so good so far. I'm about halfway through it. I have not had a lot of audiobook listening time this week. Um, because of what happened last weekend, I, um, I wasn't at work on Tuesday. I needed the day. Um, we were off Monday for the holiday, and I needed kind of the extra day just to sleep. I haven't been sleeping very well. Um, and, um, uh, and then during the work week, um, I was coming in at normal time, but I wasn't taking my lunch. 
and I was leaving at five o'clock just to get home. Like on Thursday night, I came home and I slept for like four hours. And then I went and picked up my husband from work and of course I couldn't fall asleep when I got home. So I ended up um, sleeping until like, uh, not going to bed till like two, three in the morning. And then I had to be up to go to work on Friday morning. So I was almost late Friday morning. But anyway, um, just trying to catch up and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, so audiobook listening time has been like almost null and void. Um, luckily, like I said, I only have, I'm already 50% of the way through this. I have two more audiobooks to finish by Thursday. I should be okay if I could finish this book by tomorrow. Um, I'm actually working from home on Monday because it's Memorial Day in the States. And I do uh, customer service, of course, for our U.S. market. So it will be very, very quiet for me. So my um, coworker said, you know, like, let's work from home. So he's going to work from his home. I'm going to work from my home. I'm going to have my email up, but I can kind of relax and get some stuff done during the day. And then I have two more audiobooks to listen to this month, like I said. Um, both of them, one of them is eight hours. The other one is only six, which me listening to it at double speed is not very long. I should have no problem getting both of them done. My current uh, ebook is um, Some Kind of Wonderful by Sarah Morgan. This is book number two in the Puffin Island series. I have not started this yet. I will be starting that. Um, well, this is like um, when I'm done editing and when I'm uploading it, I'll be sitting there and getting some reading done. Um, this is my last ebook that I need to read for the month, so that's exciting. Um, it's a Sarah Morgan, and I'm very much looking forward to it. Um, my current um, print book, actually, no. So I was looking around, and I kind of was really needing a comfort read this week. And um, I was looking at my library website, and they have a bunch of the Nancy Drew books, the old original um, hardcover Nancy Drew books. Sorry, I have a cat fur on my nose. Um, available as ebook for my library. So I thought, you know what, that sounds great. So I picked up the first book, and I think I'm slowly going to, very slowly, going to try and work my way through this series. And of course, it is The Secret of the Old Clock by Carolyn Keene. Um, I'm only about two chapters into it, but this has been a really nice comfort read and a real eye-opener. I was talking to my mom about this today because I was over at her house briefly for a bit this morning. And this book was published in 1930. So this book took place in 1930. As I said at the beginning of this video, if you watched um, the part I talked about my grandmother, they immigrated over from Poland in 1929, so only a year before this book was actually published. And what's boggling my mind is that in the opening scene of this book, Nancy is driving down the road in a convertible. That very same year, my grandmother was living in a sod home in Alberta. It just, it boggles my mind. It's like two completely different worlds and two completely different time periods. So it goes to show you that even though some more major cities might be a lot more affluent, you know, maybe, you know, in the States, I think, as well as here in Canada, you had some of these places that were still very much a pioneer type community. And it's just, it, that makes me, that's why I love history. That's part of the reason I love history. And I just think it's so interesting. So absolutely interesting. Um, and the last book I'm still reading uh, in print book, The Farmer's Wife by Laurie Handeland. I just, I've been too tired to pick this up at night before I go to bed. Um, I'm still really enjoying it. I am... A little over 50% of the way through it, so there I am. Oh, I wanted to mention, because I actually had a viewer ask me this, um, and I did answer her in comments, but I wanted to mention it to everybody in case you were curious. I do have tabbies here. Now, the tabbies, the tabbies, is a cat. No, these tabs are for um, how much I'd like to get to at the end of each day. When I pick up one of these books, my goal is to get through it in a week, so I put six tabs in here, like, you know, and then the seventh. You don't need a tab because it's the end of the book. Um, but my goal is to get through one of these in a week. That hasn't happened. Um, I did get a bunch of reading done on this earlier um, in the week, but um, I think I got a lot of this read on Saturday. But then, you know, once Sunday hit, it was I, I was having a hard time picking it up just because I was so tired at night and I just wanted to go to bed. So yeah, so this one didn't get read as much as it should be, but this one will be done by next week, thank goodness, because I want to get on to another one. Um, but yeah, really enjoying this one. I will talk more about it in my wrap-up next week. So anyway, guys, that is it for this video. I will very quickly show you what I am knitting because I always show you guys what I'm knitting. Um, I have a finished pair of socks, but I don't have them on the sock blocker, so I promise I'll show them to you guys next week. Um, I am started a new pair of socks. So while I was over at my mom's this morning, the whole reason I was over there is because my car was getting an oil change done, which, you know, sadly, these things have to get done. So I was kind of hanging over at my mom's house while that was getting done. So these are a new pair of socks. Whoops. Butterfingers. Um, I've only got the toe done. That's This yarn blows up so much on this camera. It's not that bright in real life, I swear. This is the yarn that I bought at the knitting festival I was at about a month ago. So yeah, so I just started the toe of the sock. 
I'm knitting these on some different needles that I just bought myself a couple weeks ago. These are called Addy Flexi Flips. So <laughs> they're something you can poke your eye out with kids. Um, so they are like double pointed needles for those of you who might knit yourselves. It's kind of like a double pointed needle but it's got this little cord in the middle. So it's almost like knitting on double, they've been kind of fun. They've taken a little bit of getting used to. They're kind of a little fiddly in my hands, but I'm really enjoying them and they're really fun to be knitting the sock on. So that's what I'm working on this weekend while I'm not trying to catch up on some of my reading, but I can actually sit and listen to my audiobook and do some knitting. So that'll be great. But anyway, guys, that is it for this video. Again, thank you so much for indulging me at the beginning. If you, if you listen to that, um, I appreciate, um, you guys so much for that. And, um, yeah, until my next video. Oh, video's coming up this week. I have my, um, my, um, drawing a blank, guys. Um, my, uh, Anticipated Reads Rewind for the month of June, um, is coming up. And then my TBR for Jill, or no, my TBR for June, which is super exciting. There's a lot of great books on there, guys. So anyway, until my next video, everybody, take care, happy reading, and thank you again so much for watching. Take care. Bye.